People, 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 good evening, good evening, good evening. I must say that I do apologize for the last podcast. If you guys actually have, were listening to me live, and yada, 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 I was on the Wi-Fi, which is probably the worst thing that I could do because it's been in and out literally all day. I realized that the stop button, like, it went from, you know, being a stop button to literally being a circle going around and around and around trying to load, then the minutes would go back and forth, so... Guys, I had to like stop that and now I went on my hotspot because the reliable network is more on my phone. So I turned on my personal hotspot to tell you guys, well, to come back and tell you guys this story. Now, I was on social media and of course on social media you get memories. Those memories entail what uh, you did on this specific day one year ago, two years ago, up to seven years, nine years ago, depending on, you know, when you started using Facebook. And I saw this picture. This picture kind of outlined some of the most difficult times in my life in the south of Thailand. One reason being because uh, just a lot of things going on, like Thailand not being what I thought, what I perceived it to be, you know. And it's crazy because a lot of people on the outside, I don't want to make this a pity party. I'm just literally going to give you my story just to see how I began change. Because we all, yes, we all face these types of transgressions, these adversities, this type of racism, cynicism, sexism, you name it. It exists. It always will exist, but it's all about battling through that and not having like a chemical reaction towards it. Because the more you get pissed off to it, that means you're getting something out of it. Therefore, it's going to keep happening. But once you start breathing and just saying, you know, forgiving yourself and say, you know what? It is what it is. I mean, all I could do is just, the, it all depends on how you react to certain situations. And you know what? When I first came here, man, I had no idea how difficult it would be in Chantaburi. I'm not going to give it my side of the story, but let's just say there were nights where I went home and slammed my arms on the bed, literally weeping out loud because of the unbelievable anger and the mistreatment I received versus my other colleague, you know, at particular places, which could go stem from a KFC to a restaurant. It could be literally anything. Um, it was a battle. It was a battle. And you know what? Seeing this picture... And, you know, living in the south of Thailand for a year, uh, you know, after going from Chantaburi, I went to the south of Thailand to get a job that paid probably 80% more. And so, yes, I went there. And over the course, you know, like the like I said, the first week, it was okay. It was fine. But next thing you know, the battle began. You know, there were people that I remember there was one time at night, uh, I literally, I couldn't believe what was happening before my eyes. And I literally sat there and I'm, I teared up. Because I'm like, I can't believe this is happening to me. Why me? And you know what? We've been asking ourselves our entire lives, why me? You know, all I'm trying to do is, you know, literally give education, give the language of English to these people who desperately so need it. Why am I being mistreated? How come this guy who came here for all the wrong reasons isn't being mistreated, but yet I am? And you know what? This goes out not just to all color people around the world. No, this isn't just about African-Americans. I'm talking about Africans who have it the worst here in Thailand. We're talking Indians. We're talking literally everybody. It doesn't matter. If you go to particular locations all around the world, you could be treated fairly, greatly, or poorly. It doesn't, you know, it all depends. Like if white Americans or anyone of white goes down to South America, it could be difficult. If blacks go to Asia, it could be difficult. If Indians go anywhere, it could be difficult. If Africans go anywhere, it could be difficult. It just depends, man. It really all depends. But it depends how you react to it, right? So like I said, my darkest months, you know, seeing this picture, seeing teachers go from being openly friendly to literally trying to get me fired. Literally, they were trying to get me fired. They were making up things out of thin air in order to destroy my teaching career there. But that leading into October 2014, which was literally the darkest month of my life, um, it being such a a literally that that had to probably be metaphorically speaking, just imagine you climbing Everest, right? And your oxygen tank is finished and you probably got about 400 meters to go to get up to the top of Everest to reach it, to peak it. Can you imagine that? Literally, it felt like I was suffocating. Felt like I was breathing my own breath. I remember I went to interviews and there was like five of us. Four Filipinos, African-American. 
They said, you, you, you. They left me outside and they never spoke to me again. After they were done interviewing the Filipinos, they literally locked the door and walked away. Uh, I got emails such as, sorry, no black teachers here. No black teachers allowed. No, white man only. The the most insane. I mean, the mo- I, I don't even know what you call it. I don't even know what you call it. But you know what? I remember, I still remember sending a text to one of my best friends, Andre, in New York. And I remember telling him the story. And I can't remember what I was saying, but I had taken a taxi at that time. And the taxi was literally driving around in circles. Of course, now I have so much more street smarts that I don't take anything like that anymore. But two years ago, I wouldn't say I was still fresh, but I was still a little bit innocent. I hadn't been destroyed completely to that point. But I remember this taxi was literally driving around in circles, just trying to rake up more money on his little meter. And I sent my friend, my best friend, one of the messages before I went to this interview. And it was just, it was hell. Uh, I remember he sent me a message back, but it was so terrifying to the point he had to hurry up and call my mother saying something is seriously wrong with Arsenia. Now, me and my mom hadn't spoke for about, probably about a year and a half because, of course, we had a huge separation because of things, the way we see life and a lot of other different things, right? But boy, oh boy. Was it, was it, you know, having two people from England backing me up at that time, which kind of just gave me that last little burst and say, don't quit, don't quit. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it was. I remember I went to an interview that day. The interview went well, but I went to one last interview. Luckily, I scored the job. I got out of this really, really racist uh, province that I literally, I saw the red flag right when I walked into the school and I got out immediately. Um... Oh my God, it's crazy because I got two jobs at that time, and I went to a wonderful English camp up there in Northeast Thailand, had a blast, it was remarkable, and that was the change, that was the change. Of course, not necessarily the biggest change, the biggest change had to come at the beginning of this year, but I'm going to tell you right now, in 2015, going from 2014 into 2015, that's when literally I... I started doing research. Now, I remember I was watching Lisa Nichols, and she was crying on the Steve Harvey show. And I was living. I didn't know Glenn Harold. Um, I didn't start doing research on Bob Proctor or any of these people until that day. I looked up Lisa Nichols, and then Lisa Nichols mentioned Les Brown. And when she mentioned Les Brown, I had no idea that Les Brown was going to be one of those ultimate motivators that I'd be listening to probably for the next year, up to two years. Who knows how long? But... I was living in a very, very racially infested place here in where I live right now. And I remember every time I went outside, there were three people at a particular uh, salon that would give me some of the dirtiest looks ever. They would talk so bad about me. There were so many things going around. And that's when I, next thing you know, I ran uh, ran across Glenn Harold. And Glenn Harold had an exercise in his book. And that exercise was like, okay, you have eight categories of life. It could be fun and hobbies. Family relationships, love and friends, uh, careers, a lot of different things. And physical environment was the biggest one because physical environment is where you live and where you work. And I remember I labeled mine at about a two or three. Now, my job was still up and down at that time. It wasn't the best. But my physical environment, where I live, if I go from work back to home and I really don't want to go back to my home, it's time for me to leave. And you know what? After I made that will of life, I left in six days. I literally left where I was living in six days. You know what? I went to another place. Was this place better? Well, for the first probably month or two months, it was good. Next thing you know, it was too loud. There's a lot of people playing loud music. There was the slums probably on the other side of the parking lot. Security didn't want to do anything. I said, you know what? Enough is enough. I've already done this before. I left again. And now my physical environment where I live right now is an eight. My career right now is a nine. Where I'm working right now and teaching is a fantastic 8 8.5 it's looking beautiful it's all about pushing more projects we got to keep on going i'm sounding like eddie murphy right now but that's when the change began that's when it began all it took was me watching the secret one morning in april of 2015 just last year and seeing lisa nichols so i started doing research on all the people who were in the secret and lisa nichols i found lisa nichols and I bought another book by Jack Canfield. It was the thin book in terms of the law of attraction. Uh, and Glenn Harold talking about, you know, different relationships and stuff. And so that ended up getting me off 
into the right foot, in the right direction. Now, of course, Napoleon Hill didn't start until at the literally the eve of last year. The eve of last year. We're talking December 30th, December 31st. Um, but that was the change. The change began. So what I'm telling you to do right now. Now, of course, I could just sit here and say, don't give up. Now, guys, I have a podcast. Yes. I love speaking about, I speak a hell of a lot. Number one, obviously, you guys already know who have been listening to this podcast for so long. But for those of you who are new to, you know, new to this podcast, welcome in Brazil. I saw that you guys were in. Someone in Montana, welcome. Look, we got people from all over. And you guys can either be listening to this just for English capabilities, like a lot of my students. You could be listening to this because you want change in your life. You could be listening to this podcast for so many other things. You could listen to this in the morning while walking. You could be listening to this on your way to work. It doesn't matter. But you're looking for answers. You're searching for answers. You need to start asking the right questions, like Michael Bernard Beckwith says. What is it that's trying to emerge in my life? See, through any negative situation is the greatest lesson in life. What is it, and it could be anything. If something came up and you can't go to a particular place, it's crazy because Singapore, man, I lost $400 last year. You know why? I booked a ticket. I booked a ticket to Singapore. And next thing you know, my friend, she bailed. She, uh, I gave her money for the hotel already. It was a complete shambolic. I said, you know what? I'm not going to go. I'm going to lose money. But at that same moment, guys, this was the biggest change in my life. We're talking these, just uh, shortly after Christmas, I had visited this girl in Chiang Mai, one of the friends that I graduated this TEFL institution with in terms of teaching. I visited her. We had an insane Christmas. It was unbelievably fantastic, funny as heck, okay? And the craziest part about it is that she completely changed within three days, and then I never, we were never friends after that because... We literally scheduled our entire New Year's Eve in Singapore. We were going to watch the fireworks right there in Marina Bay. And she just literally bailed out. But at that same time, I said, you know what? I'm not going to go to Singapore. And it's crazy because one of my doctor friends who I actually met on Singapore Airlines, probably very coincidentally, uh, three years ago, he said, you should go, you should go, you should go. But something told me not to go. And then I asked that question. What is it that's trying to emerge in my life right now? What is it that's trying to take, take, fill that void that's literally consuming me? Well, that's when one morning something told me to get up and go to Bangkok. So I went to Bangkok, which is like 20 minutes away. Went to Bangkok, and then I went to the biggest bookstore in Bangkok. And then next, you know, I'm searching on these per- these personal development books, and there it is, Lapo- Napoleon Hill, The Law of Success. And then at that given moment, just three months prior to that, one of my ex-colleagues, he said, you have a radio voice. You should be doing a podcast. Have your own podcast. And that's when I started talking about Napoleon Hill on my podcast at the beginning of January. And so almost a year later, look where I have gone. I mean, look where I've gone. I mean, I have my podcast on iTunes. There are people listening to me from all over the world. See, that's what you need to do. You need to seriously just sit down and have still time with yourself. I'm talking one hour quiet. And you need to literally just ask the right question. What is it that the universe is trying to bring into your life? What is it that's trying to emerge in your life? What is it? Ask the right questions and you'll get the right answers. Now me, this was a battle. A battle for the fittest. And you know what? If it wasn't for actually living in Australia uh, for a year, about five years ago, I would have given up a long time ago. I wouldn't have taken this uh, and I would have just bailed. But you know what? Something just told me to keep going. It's kind of like that light at the end of the tunnel. Although it was a hell of a long tunnel. We're talking 50 miles long, man. 100 ki- one hundred kilometers if you're Thai or anywhere else in the world. Probably the majority of all of you in the world. But the tunnels, everything. It, like I said, I used the metaphor, metaphorically speaking, in terms of Mount Everest. Okay? Just imagine that you're almost at the top. You're almost about to summit Mount, em- Mount Everest. But then your oxygen tank goes out. And just imagine trying to breathe. 
that high up there. Feels like you're suffocating, right?